well, and you probably have heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated. Exacerbated by the fact that my syntax is highly complicated, because I immigrated from the single greatest little place in the Caribbean, Dominican Republic. I love it. Jeez, I'm jealous of it. And beyond that, ever since my folks passed on, I haven't gone back. God damn, I gotta get on that. <laughs> Just to be clear, I did not grow up in Washington Heights. I was raised by immigrant parents in Inwood, some blocks north, with a similar landscape and similar immigrants and Spanish speakers. Why not write a musical about it? In the Inwood. In the Heights? Oh, in the Heights! It's just, in the Heights, it's just hillier, it's more climatic, it's more iconic, it's more well known, and it sings better. And they do say home is where the heart is after all. Home is the people in it. I am so thankful for my family, and especially my abuela. For those in the audience, not from the single greatest little place in the Caribbean, abuela means grandma. Now, she wasn't actually my grandma, but she was around that much. She just became my real abuela. When I was six and had my first Latin dance class, she was up at the front of the room, because I took her with me, and she whipped out one of these. saw my spotlight for the whole class, so I never came back. And she also ran a bodega a couple blocks north from where we lived, which is pretty much like a Mexican 7-Eleven. <laughs> so I was in charge of running the slushy stations with her in summer. She's just one of those people who sees the bigger picture in everything. So when I first told her that I wanted to write musicals and that I wanted to star myself in them, she was the one jumping up and down like it was her dream living it through me. Yo. Just imagine the lights, and the people. Imagine you in the middle of the crowd. Imagine the fame and the fortune. It's all gonna happen, Eho. One of the biggest things she taught me was to keep going forward and to learn from everything I do. She's the most impatient and irritable and famously short-tempered woman you'll ever meet in your life. But that's why we love her. And that's why it was so hard to see her go. There's an album with this picture from the ladies at Daniela's. You can tell it's from the 80s by the volume of their hair. There's Usnavi, just a baby, 87 Halloween. If it happened, on this block, Abuela was there. Every afternoon I came, she'd make sure I did my homework. She could barely write her name, but even so, she would stare at the papers and tell me, Bueno, let's review. Why don't you tell me everything you know? One of the biggest things she taught me was to keep going forward and to learn from everything I do. You know, she left such a mark on me, on my life, that I had to write her in In the Heights, my first musical, as Abuela Claudia. A beloved local abuela <laughs> with a scratch-off lottery habit. I know abuela's never gonna win the lottery, so it's up to me to draw blood and hit an artery. There's a photo with this picture from my high school graduation with a program mint condition and a star beside my name There's a picture of my parents As we left for California We saved everything we gave her Every little scrap of paper And our lives are in these pictures While the woman who held us is gone But we go Thank you.
for everything I know. All I ever knew as a kid were cast albums. Landis was the first musical I saw, and every time I would play Bring Him Home, my abuela would start to cry, which is so weird for a kid like me to see, but it stuck with me. And then the second musical I saw, Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> and it was about an ugly songwriter who just wants girls to notice him, and I was like, this guy's got some good ideas, I know all about that. <laughs> with Hamilton, it was completely different, though. I thought I did a pretty decent job of bringing a bit of street back to Broadway. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just another edgy hip hop musical, you know? But really, the hardest part was pitching it to our producer, Jeffrey Seller. Consider it's a little different, isn't it? You think it is limited, give it a minute, envision it. Dead in the middle of seven, you put it on television, every little bit of precision. Cause I am not thrown away my shot. I am not thrown away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not thrown away my shot. I'm gonna get astonished at the King's College I probably shouldn't have read the tag, I'm amazed and astonished The problem is I got a lot of friends with no polish I gotta holler just to be heard with every word I drop knowledge I'm past patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing Every expectation, every address, and act of creation I'm laughing in the face of casualties and sorrow But that's how I'm thinking past tomorrow And I am not throwing away my shot I am not throwing away my shot Hey yo, I'm just like my country, I'm young, scrappy and hungry and I'm not You know, there are going to be things that I write that people will love and things that I write that people will hate. <laughs> With Hamilton, I knew I was doing my best work. I did everything I knew about musical theater and everything I knew about hip-hop and threw them in the same pot to see what sort of paella I'd make. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was going to work or not, but I was like, this is going to be tasty. <laughs> I'm all about falling in love with an idea so much that I see it through to completion. It's not enough to just go, hey, it'd be cool if you do this, hey, it'd be cool if there was a song about this. It's about that impulse or that creative thing that doesn't leave you alone. It bugs you when you sleep, it bugs you when you're taking a shower, it bugs you when you're walking your dog. <laughs> it's really, those are the ideas I try to really sort of chase and write down when they feel true. It's that simple, really, and it's that complicated. Imagine the light, imagine the people, imagine us in the middle of the crowd. Imagine the fame, imagine the fortune, it's all happening. Imagine your life and all of its changes, imagine making this neighborhood proud. And they're screaming your names out loud. It's all happening. All of the success on Broadway, it's, it's great. But it means nothing if I don't have any success back home where it all started. When I went back home and took in the Heights on its first equity tour in Puerto Rico, you know, we did the show and I promised myself and I promised my fans that I would play Usnavi again, which is the leader of the show. And as the curtain fell on closing night, it closed something in me that I didn't even know was open. I remember reading one review and it was like saying that the show was about our families who left. It's a dispatch for the families who left and it's them telling us that they're okay. Which is exactly what my family and my abuela went through. You know, that was the most creatively and emotionally fulfilling tour of my life. And I can't wait to bring Hamilton back home so I can relive that. One last time. We're gonna teach them how to say goodbye. 